And then the third form with the inverted form, you suddenly have to start the sentence with nu, with we, with us. That's weird and that makes my brain hurt. But anyway, there are three main ways to ask questions in French. The first is the statement form, where you use a regular statement but your voice goes up at the end of it to indicate that you're turning it into a question. In French, this is called question avec intonation montante. An example would be Tu viens avec nous? Tu viens avec nous? Next, there are the questions with est-ce que, est-ce que at the beginning, such as est-ce que tu viens avec nous? Est-ce que tu viens avec nous? And thirdly, there's the inverted form, or question avec inversion du sujet, which is where the conjugation of the verb and the subject switch places. And this could be seen in the example Viens-tu avec nous? Viens-tu avec nous? Or the most famous question that us anglophones know is Parlez-vous anglais? Moi, j'ai atteint un très bon niveau de français, mais J'ai choisi de ne que maîtriser les deux premières formes de questions de la langue française. And in today's video, I'm going to go through with you why I think this is a fantastically useful French hack for all of you French learners out there who might be feeling a little overwhelmed. So let's get seated and comfortable and get into the video. Allez, c'est parti! C'est très sympa de vous revoir ici tout le monde. Merci d'être revenu. And for those of you that are new around here, bienvenue. Je m'appelle Alex and I'm a French language coach helping other English speakers who want to progress efficiently with the language so that they can become confident French speakers. For a free guide on six tips on how you can become a confident francophone yourself, click on the link down in the description below. Alors, revenons au sujet de la vidéo. So I decided to only master two of the three main forms of asking questions in French. Now you might be thinking, but it's all French, why not learn it all? Well, tout d'abord, what I'm not saying is that I didn't learn it at all. What I am saying is that for quite a while, perhaps a year or two, of really getting used to speaking French, when I was doing my active study and practice sessions like listening, reading, writing and speaking, when I was really choosing to sit down and focus on my French and what I wanted to gain from it, I managed to shut off my eyes and my ears to learning the ins and outs of the inverted form of question. I knew it was there, but I had decided for the following reasons not to focus on it. The simplest reason to give is that I started paying attention to what the French people around me were saying. And the simple fact of the matter is, the inverted form of question, i.e. parlez-vous anglais, just did not come up that often, or even at all. When I looked into why I wasn't hearing the inverted form very often, or even not at all, it was because that it's the most formal form of question you can ask in French. And so you might fairly say, well, fine, it's formal, but you still have times in your life where you'll have to use formal French. Why not learn it? And that's a really, really valid point. Cependant, I noticed that in daily life, where you might think of a situation as a formal exchange, for example, in a shop or in a bakery, where you're interacting with someone using vous, for example, they weren't necessarily using this inverted form, but they were rather using the simple statement form, like when they'd say, Vous voulez autre chose? Vous voulez autre chose? So they're using the statement form here, which is a normal, you want something else? You want something else? With the intonation rising at the end. Or they would use the est-ce que form and they'd say, est-ce que vous voulez autre chose? Est-ce que vous voulez autre chose? And this was coming up all the time in situations that I would have deemed formal rather than informal. You know, they were using vous, but they simply weren't using the inverted form of question. So I started to say to myself, well then, what's the point in focusing on this if it's not being used? Let's be pragmatic. French has so much to learn. What if I could save time? And this brings me on to my next reason why I focused on only two forms of questions in French. Those of you that have watched some of my videos before might know that I am very keen on learning efficiently, being pragmatic. Don't learn something that you're not going to need to use because if because learning is not just about the reading and the listening of it over and over again. Learning is completed by the production of the language, either through writing or through speaking. So if you're not gonna have the opportunity in your daily life or in your French practice that makes sense for you to use, uh, for example, the 
inverted form of questions in French. Save that time for studying something else and that's exactly what I did. Now I know that a lot of you will know what I'm talking about when I say that learning to get used to, get comfortable with the order of elements in French sentences is really quite tricky. So even changing that slightly means that any time that you're trying to speak in real time, this just sets you back a long way in your fluidity and this impacts your feeling of progress. I'd rather learn the forms of questions which make the most minor changes and give me the least work to have to do in order to master them because there's so many hundreds probably of combinations of these elements that you can use in a sentence suddenly have to change them around for one type of question that you're rarely going to use doesn't make much sense. So let's look at an example of a question in all three of these forms with a object pronoun, which is something that us English speakers find particularly tricky to master in French because they go in a different place in the sentence than in their English equivalents. So first of all, in the statement form, we have Ils nous ont donné des nouvelles. Ils nous ont donné des nouvelles. In the est-ce form, we have Est-ce qu'il nous a donné des nouvelles? Est-ce qu'il nous a donné des nouvelles? So you can see these are very similar. You just add the esque to the beginning of it. And then thirdly, with the inverted form of the question, which frankly makes my brain hurt, I'm going to read it from my phone. It is, nous ont-ils donné des nouvelles? Nous ont-ils donné des nouvelles? And so it's just weird for us to comprehend as English speakers why nous would go at the beginning. So I decided that I need to use this language in my day-to-day -day life. I haven't got time to waste. I'm just going to learn the things that are simplest and they're actually used most often. So if you are in a French-speaking country, pay attention with your eyes and your ears to what the locals around you are saying. And if you don't live in a French-speaking country, then feel free to take my advice based on a lot of experience. Another reason not to study all three forms of questions at once, and this goes for so much of the language itself, is just that making progress feels good. And when you have fewer things to learn, that gives you more practice time for each of those elements that you're studying, that you're practicing, and which therefore increases the happy feelings inside because you've made progress. You feel like you've moved forward with your French. Why wouldn't you want to replicate that as much as possible? And of course, as I've already briefly mentioned, when you learn fewer things, you have more space in your mind to practice and work on something else that's tricky for you in the language. Like, for example, using vous instead of tu in those formal situations. Imagine in those exchanges at the bakery or uh, with your teacher. You want to use vous. It's very important for you to use vous out of a show of respect. But the questions, there's three forms of them, they're so difficult. So you just practice the statement form or the esque form and that gives you time in the moment when having a real-time conversation to come out with vous instead of tu. But that's just an example of something that your mind will be freer to do in real-time situations because you haven't been overly focusing on all three types of question in French. If you're concerned about coming across as rude in your interactions in French uh, when you pose your questions, pose des questions, pose questions? <laughs> when you ask questions in French in situations which might be construed as formal, then um, I can tell you that there are registers, levels of language in French. You have soutenu, courant, and familier. Now, soutenu is where your formal question form, the inverted form, will fit. But if you don't know that, courant with the esque form is used everywhere in daily situations. And that I can confirm from my daily life here in France. So you might not use the most elegant, the most formal form of question, but in most daily life interactions, you don't need the most formal form of question. Now, I could just as easily have only learned one of the form of questions, but I did feel that the esque form and the statement form were so similar that it wouldn't be too much trouble to, uh, to learn both of them. And also, as I'm so big on learning what I actually hear in everyday life, this gave me the confidence to think that it was very worthwhile to actually cover both of them in my study. Most of us learn statements first before questions. So the fact that these two 
follow the statement form in terms of the order of the elements in the sentence makes a lot of sense and saves us a lot of time as learners. Because if we look at a sentence like tu viens avec nous, tu viens avec nous, well first of all that as a statement is you're coming with us and then but if you rise your voice up at the end tu viens avec nous, tu viens avec nous, you're saying are you coming with us, are you coming with us and then simply to use the est que form you just say est-ce que tu viens avec nous, est-ce que tu viens avec nous, you don't even have to raise your voice at the end because the est-ce que makes sure that people know that it's a question. So that's really, really simple. And then when it comes to learning the difficult things like adding in the object pronouns in the right place like est-ce que tu m'en as donné? Est-ce que tu m'en as donné? Did you give me some? Did you give me some? That's obviously really tricky to learn where you put the me, where you put the en, does it go before the me or does it go after the me? You've got to spend a lot of time practicing that to get that fixed in your mind. So when you've done that, you can then automatically apply it to questions because you've already learned all the correct order of the elements. But with the inverted question, that suddenly changes. And like we saw before in the example, uh, nous ont-ils donné des nouvelles? Something like that. We can see that it gets a lot harder. So my final thoughts on this are really, be sensible, be pragmatic, learn what is appropriate for your situation, your life. If you're not in France, I appreciate that it can be a bit trickier, but really I'm hoping some of my tips have made sense to you. Why learn three when you don't necessarily need to learn all three? Or learn all three, but learn them at different times. Master one now so that you can keep your conversations going, so that you can feel that happiness that comes with making efficient progress. But really, do what makes sense for your situation. If you find asking questions in the formal form easier for whatever reason, then go and do that. Learn that, ask the questions. People aren't going to correct you. You're gonna be asking legitimately gra grammatically correct French sentences. Remember, effective communication is the key. Alors, quelle est la forme de question que toi, tu trouves la plus facile à retenir à, et à utiliser dans tes conversations? Tell me down in the comments below. I really want to know if it's just me that finds it easiest to remember the statement form and the ESCO form. Maybe there's some of you out there who love the inverted form. And also let me know down below if you've enjoyed this sort of French hacks style video and would like to see more ways to save time and learn more efficiently in the future. Remember, if you're struggling with your spoken French, ne culpabilise pas trop. Instead, go ahead and download my free guide with six proven techniques for increasing your confidence with the Français oral. But for now, merci infiniment d'avoir regardé tout le monde. À la prochaine et bon français. Au revoir. Ciao.